And welcome to the Sawyer Center, ladies and gentlemen. Southern Nazarene men's basketball on the air as the Crimson Storm taking on the Southeastern Oklahoma State Savage Storm here at the Sawyer Center in the conference opener for both schools. Luke McConnell, Grant McNew here with you at the Sawyer Center. Delighted to have you alongside as SNU looks to move above the 500 mark with their first conference win this evening against Southeastern Oklahoma State. And Grant, so far, has been a bit of an uneven start for SNU, 2-2 two two thus far. Some really impressive things thus far, as you heard uh, from Adam Bohach at halftime of the women's game. Some really good, some really uh, things from a team that, you know, is a veteran team, a lot of guys back from last year's squad, and, you know, just it's just been a little bit uneven thus far. Yeah, it's not the start that I think – was expected out of this Crimson Storm team. They were ranked number 16 going into the year. Now they're dropped out of the top 25 uh, here just recently. So I think what you're going to see tonight is how are they going to respond to adversity, Luke? That's something that I think a lot of people are curious about going into this matchup. Because, yes, it's conference play opening up, right, of course. But you're not getting to ease into conference play. You're getting to face a really tough Southeastern squad. The Southeastern squad... Missing a lot of big pieces from the past couple years, notably point guard Adam Dworsky, along with Kellen Manick, Bobby Johnson, guys who've been around the block a few times in Durant. And uh, as much respect as this program, these programs have for each other, there's still plenty of talent on both sides of the floor that is going to be on display here tonight. A great crowd on hand here at the Sawyer Center as... We are just about set to go here at the Sawyer Center. And, Grant, as you look at these squads, you look at this matchup, what are some keys to the game for tonight? Athleticism. Uh, if you're SNU, you have to focus on how you can out-athlete uh, Southeastern. I think it's clear, even just from the warm-ups, windmill dunks, double clutches, whatever it is, you can out-athlete. You are faster than the Southeastern uh, squad. But you have to be careful with the basketball. Southeastern last game forced 20 turnovers uh, against their opponent. If you're SNU, you can't afford to lose the ball because this is an aggressive and good Southeastern team. Be careful. Use athleticism. Just play good basketball. Turnovers, an early issue for SNU here in the early going. 14 turnovers per game after averaging less than 11 a season ago. Taking care of the basketball, always a hallmark of Adam Bohach's teams. But a little bit uneven in that regard as SNU's turned the ball over at least 11 times in every game so far this season. Let's look through the starting lineups. First for Southeastern Oklahoma State under head coach Kelly Green, his 11th season in Durant, assisted by Ryan Quinn. First up, number one, senior guard Cody Cluett, 6'5", from San Marcos, California. Number three, sophomore guard R.J. Weeks, 6'4", from Kingston, Oklahoma. Number 11, junior forward Kyle Leslie, 6'7", from Nora, Australia. Number 20, junior guard Jet Sternberger, 6'1", from Kingfisher. And number 22, senior guard Al Irvin, back for another year, 5'11", from Griffith, Indiana. Southeastern averaging 84.5 points per game so far this season. Have not played at home yet this season. Saturday will be their first contest in Durant this season. And looking at the starters for your Southern Nazarene Crimson Storm under head coach Adam Bohach in his 15th season at the helm in Bethany. First up, number zero, senior guard Adokie EIA, 6'3", from Oklahoma City, the Putnam City North product, averaging 16 points per game so far this season. Number one, senior guard Jalen Lynn, six foot from Collierville, Tennessee, four points, two rebounds per game this season. Number three, senior guard Xavier Bryant, six one from Dallas, Texas, six and a half points, five rebounds, four assists per game this season for X. Number 13, sophomore guard Tyler McGuy, six five from Denton, Texas, 16 points and three rebounds per game. Has hit multiple three pointers three times here in SNU's first four games. And in the middle, number 21, junior forward Nick Davis, 6'9", from Arlington, Texas. Ten points, eight rebounds per game thus far for Nick Davis. 
Crimson Storm went one and two against Southeastern last year, falling here in Bethany in overtime, 94 to 93, in a game where you were you would be hard pressed to find better basketball than what was displayed here at the Sawyer Center between these two schools last year in that 94-93 overtime loss. But they got the win when they needed it in the semifinals of the Great American Conference Tournament, a 77-74 win over Southeastern to send SNU to the tournament championship. SNU leads the series overall 22-20. They've won six of nine, but have lost two of three here in Bethany. Southeastern comes out in their traveling blues with yellow trim, Southeastern across the front. SNU in their home whites, red numbers and trim, Southern Nazarene on the top and bottom of the crimson numerals. Again, a great crowd on hand for this Wednesday night special. Good crowd from Southeastern as well as a great home crowd for the Crimson Storm. Nick Davis and Kyle Leslie set to jump center circle. And uh, we'll have a false jump there. We'll try it again. This time Leslie wins the tip. It'll be Al Irvin moving left to right for the Savage Storm. Here's Sternberger up to Leslie, left wing to Weeks. Leslie with it, hands to Al Irvin. Finds the cutting Sternberger on the back cut, and he got the layup off the glass as he got past Jalen Lynn for two. Southeastern extends some full court pressure to start. My guy gets it into Jalen Lynn, and he's called for a travel as he didn't put the ball on the floor and took too many steps to get set. That's exactly what we talked about in the pregame, Luke. You've got to be more aware of what's going on. You can't take extra steps. Simple mistake, easy turnover. Sternberger in the corner, out top to Irvin. Right wing to Cluett. Now Weeks retrieves. Irvin will penetrate to the baseline and a foul coming up on SNU. It's going to be on Xavier Bryant. His first and the team's first. 30 seconds into the contest. 2 0 Southeastern. Weeks will trigger it into Sternberger. Nearly lost it into the SNU bench, but saved it. Loose ball on the deck. Cluett and Magai go down for it. Cluett lost it. Bryant. Has it for SNU. Leaves it for EIA. Cross the paint. Left hand layup is good for Adokie EIA. And we're tied at two. Weeks quickly back the other way. Rejected out of play by Nick Davis. And Davis with a bit of a stare down on RJ Weeks as he lay on the floor. Nick Davis, long arm of the law down low. Wow. It'll be weeks to trigger it in on the baseline. Inbounds comes to Leslie on the right block. Fading away jumper over Davis. In and out, no good. Rebound fought for. It's Irvin who comes up with it. Missed the putback. Tipped out by Cluett. Here's Leslie, right wing three. It's off, no good. Irvin, another offensive rebound. Lost it this time, and it's out of play to SNU. Al Irvin getting inside for a couple of offensive rebounds there. Here's Bryant. Leaves it back for Jalen Lynn. Hands it back to Bryant across half court. Top of the key, EIA. Between the circles goes left behind the Davis pick. To the block. Spins into the paint. Right hand shot's too strong. Davis punches the rebound out to McGuy. Fresh 20 here for SNU. EIA aggressive early, getting to the basket. Magai left wing with Leslie on him. Down low to Davis. That's a mismatch. He's got Irvin on him, and Irvin commits the foul. So foul coming up on Al Irvin. His first, first on the Savage Storm. Minute and a half gone by, first half, two to two. Our score between the Storms, Crimson and Savage. Bryant triggered in for SNU. Lobs it to the right wing to EIA, left wing Magai. Into the middle of the paint, Bryant, turnaround floater is no good. Leslie clears the glass for the Savage Storm. Here's Irvin up the near side, behind the screen from Sternberger. Good close out there by Davis on the switch. Left side, Cluett. Cluett into the paint, 
Found Ledley down low, blew the layup, and Bryant has the rebound. Bryant will take his time getting up the court for SNU. Leaves it from a guy, now right wing to Lynn. EIA to Bryant left wing. Now EIA right wing into the paint. All the way to the bucket, stops, hangs, left hand layup, rolls off no good, and Davis couldn't control the rebound as that one hung on the rim for a little while and accidentally knocked the offensive rebound out of play. So three shots in close for Adokie EIA, aggressive into the paint thus far. Here's Cluett, hands to Weeks. He'll hand to Irvin, top of the key. He'll drive left side, kicks it out. Sternberger, left wing three, on the way and good from Jet Sternberger. Sternberger averaging 20 points a game this season. Just five made triples coming in to tonight's game. Emphasis on getting to the basket a little bit more so far here in the early going. He's 22 of 22 at the foul line. Here's EIA between the circles, gives it left elbow to McGuire, right wing to Bryant. Fires it down low to Davis. Davis banging with Leslie. Oh, a nice step through. Looked like Davis might have turned his ankle or something. He lost his footing either way and the basketball. Here's Sternberger right wing. And a bump and a foul coming up on Nick Davis. Adam Bohotch not pleased that that bump was called on this end and not on the other. That'll be the first on Davis and the second on the Crimson Storm. Leslie and Irvin will check out. Brennan Burns will check in along with Jamison Richardson. Richardson, transfer from Abilene Christian University where he spent the 2020-21 season. And Burns, a transfer from East Central. A native of Bethany, played at Bethany High School. Sternberger steps inside the three-point line, missed the shot. EIA with the rebound. 5-2, Southeastern with the lead, 16-20 to go first half. EIA to McGuire left wing, skips it over in the corner to Bryant in front of the Southeastern bench. Here's Bryant. Whips it into the corner. EIA quick trigger on the three, and he rattled it in. Adokie EIA has all five for SNU here in the early going. Here's Cluett. Cut off top of the key, right wing to Weeks. Weeks will drive to the baseline, leaves it out for Richardson. Fakes a pass, fires a three, off the back iron. Magai up high with the rebound. Guy will bring it across the timeline. Richardson, a bump, no call there. McGuire, all the way to the basket, puts it in. Off the glass, and the foul! Foul coming up on R.J. Weeks, and that'll take us to our first timeout of the half. 15-41 to play first half. Southern Nazarene with a 7-5 edge over Southeastern. We'll take a break and be back on the other side. Seven to five, Southern Nazarene leading Southeastern here in the early going. Substitutions both ways here. Chandler Dickinson checks in for Cluett for Southeastern. Three subs for SNU, the freshman Javon Jackson, Manny Dixon, and Mo Wilson in for the Crimson Storm as Bryant, Davis, and Lynn sit down for SNU. Magai's free throw on the way and good. Into the game comes Robert Briley for Richardson. So far in the early going of the season, Kelly Green 
opting for a little bit of a wider rotation thus far. Ten players playing nine minutes per game. It's a new a bit of full court pressure. Sternberger fires it across to Weeks. Now here's Briley, right wing, trying to go for Weeks. Threw it off EIA's leg out of play. Nobody looking for that pass. 16 on the shot clock here for the Savage Storm. Weeks lobs it in for Dickinson. Working on the guy into the paint. And he shuffled his feet. Looked like he shuffled it before he picked up his dribble there. Then definitely did after a moment of holding on to it in the paint. So that's the third turnover for Southeastern here this evening. Southeastern will extend full court pressure. Comes to Javon Jackson. Jackson bumped off his spot on the sideline by Weeks, and that'll be number two on R.J. Weeks. Grant, no doubt, Southeastern saw the tape of SNU's last 10 minutes against Lubbock <laughs> Christian the other week. Yeah, and with that full court pressure, I think out of the players on the floor, Javon Jackson is someone that I'm very comfortable having the ball in his hand. A phenom freshman. Landon Condiff and Al Irvin in for Southeastern. Double team comes on the freshman. He gets it over to McGuy. Right wing Manny Dixon. Over to Wilson. Hands to McGuy. Fires up a three-pointer and knocked it down. Dickinson went under the screen from Wilson, and you can't do that with Tyler McGuy. He's got six, and SNU leads by six, 11 to five. He came in 10 of 23 on the season. If you've got the ball in his hands, he's always a threat to put it up and knock it down. Reaching foul going on Mo Wilson as he tried to knock that one away from Landon Condiff. That's his first third team foul on SNU. Burns between the circle. Guarded by the freshman Jackson. Knives into the paint. Knocked away from a guy. He got it back. Fade away is no good. And EIA collects the rebound and Briley ties him up. A bit of aggression there between EIA and Briley. And Ian Moat checking in for SNU. His first action of the season. Briley, Dickinson, and Irvin will check out Sternberger, Cluett, and Leslie back in for Southeastern. Lots of subs early here for the Savage Storm. McGuy lobs it into Jackson. Cut off on the sideline, and it's knocked away and stolen. Here's Burns all the way in. Layup is too strong, and Condiff knocks it out of play. Man, just when I brag on his ball handling skills, he loses it, Luke. The bounce comes to Moat, sophomore from Austin. The freshman Jackson will bring it up. Double team comes. Fires it ahead to Moat. This new breaks the press. Man-to-man -man defense here for Southeastern. Jackson crosses over on Leslie. Step back three-pointer off the back iron for the freshman. Dixon tips the rebound. Wilson saves it, and Moat collects it near half court. A fresh 20 for SNU. Here's Moat to the right wing. Up top to Jackson, and he shuffled his feet before he put the ball on the ground. A turnover for SNU. That's number three here in the first half. 11-5 to five our score still, 13.53 to go. In the opening 20 minutes, conference opener for both schools. A great crowd on hand here in Bethany. Here's Sternberger. That's knocked away by Dixon and out of bounds off Sternberger. Good hustle there from Manny Dixon. It's turnover number four for Southeastern. Jackson working up against Burns. Is it to Wilson? In the corner, Moat. Now Jackson retrieves right wing. Right corner now, Ian Moat. Back to Dixon. Back to Moat. He'll drive. Pass Leslie. Stop. And that pass deflected by Cluett. Out of play. It'll be SNU basketball on the near sideline. Grant a flop. <laughs> Warning has been issued in a lot of places in Division I, but Sternberger right there. Absolutely deserving of one. I guess that's not as much of an emphasis here at this level 
from what we've seen here in the early part of the season. Yeah, I think you definitely could have seen it there. Here's Jackson with eight on the shot clock behind the screen from Nick Davis, who's in for McGuy. Wilson will drive on Cluett all the way to the block. Outside, Moat forces up the three-pointer at the shot clock buzzer. It's off the back iron, no good. And Cluett the rebound. Cluett drives right down the lane, working on the freshman. Forces it up through contact, no good. And Wilson has the rebound for SNU. Wilson galloping into the paint. Leaves it for Dixon, and that's ripped away by Brennan Burns. Here's the Bethany native all the way in, off the glass with the right hand, and good. A finger roll. It snaps a long scoreless streak for both teams. 11 to 7 our score. Watt finds Jackson. He'll work it up the left side, up ahead to Manny Dixon. Mowat down low to Nick Davis, guarded by Leslie. Davis backing down into the paint. Keeps the foot down, blocked from behind. I think that was Cluett who got it. Here's Burns on the outlet. Outside Condiff, three-pointer on the way and good. 12-15 to go first half, 11-10 now. It's the Savage Storm creeping back into this one. Full court pressure, giving SNU some problems. You're just getting in a good rhythm offensively. Wilson will walk it up after letting the traffic clear. Right side, Manny Dixon. Up top to Wilson. Hands to Dixon, back to Jackson on the left wing. He'll stop, rise and fire for three. And he knocked it down. The freshman with his first bucket of the night. And SNU back up by four, 14 to 10. Here's Sternberger, drives to the baseline, cut off by Dixon. Throws it back out to Condiff. Knocked away by Moat, and it's off Condiff out of play. That'll take us to our under 12 timeout. 11.35 to go first half. Southern Nazarene with a 14-10 lead over Southeastern. We'll be back on the other side of this timeout. Southern Nazarene leading Southeastern 14 to 10 as we come back from our under 12 timeout. Luke McConnell, Grant McNew with you. And Grant's what, Grant, what has popped out to you so far? The defensive pressure by SNU has really stepped up. There we saw uh, Ian Mowat. By the way, he's coming in a big way. Uh, we saw him knock that ball out of bounds off the leg of a Southeastern player. So I think defensively, SNU has looked really strong. Bryant, EIA, and Lynn back in for SNU out of the timeout. Al Irvin and Sternberger back in for Southeastern. Here's Davis on the block guarded by Burns, and Burns with a too aggressive of a forearm shiver into the back of Nick Davis. will pick up the cheap foul there. Burns, the Bethany native, has been a pest against SNU, averaging 10.5 per game in six career games against SNU. Has scored 22 and 14 in two wins for East Central in this building over the past two years. Here's Lynn between the circles, right wing to EIA, back up top to Lynn. Outside EIA, rise and fire for three! And a Dokie EIA, his second triple of the night, he's got eight. And SNU back up by seven, 17 to 10. Here's Cluett to the foul line, back outside Sternberger. He'll try to answer with a triple of his own, it's short off the front iron, and Lynn cleans it up for SNU. Bryant holding right wing, guarded by Sternberger. Double team comes, Bryant evades it nicely to the foul line, kicks it out, EIA, left corner. Can't get the shot off, he'll drive into the paint, cut off by Leslie, finds McGuire left wing. 
He'll drive to the baseline, cut off, and he threw that pass a little wide of EIA and out of play. Sixth turnover of the first half for SNU. Southeastern with five already as well. Two teams that do not turn the basketball over very much historically. SNU doing a little bit more in the early going of the season than certainly Adam Bohach would like. Southeastern, a little under 10 per game. Sternberger creates some space on the baseline and knocks down the 10-footer over Xavier Bryant. Sternberger has seven, and the lead is five. Bryant finds McGuy, quickly break the press. EIA drives, lobs it up for Davis. Too tall on the lob as it went through his hands. Here's Irvin back the other way. Gives it to Leslie, bounce passed over to Brennan Burns. Tried to kick it out for Sternberger, and Jalen Lynn jumped up, and his face got in the way of that pass, and it goes out of bounds. He may have been watching the World Cup earlier. Play defense with any part of your body. <laughs> and in basketball, you can use your hands, fortunately. Irvin will lob it up to Brennan Burns. 20 on the shot clock. Halfway through the first half, 17 to 12, SNU with the lead. Here's Leslie, drives baseline on Davis. Fading away, hook shot with the right hand is no good. EIA collects the rebound, his third. Bryant across the timeline for SNU, moving right to left here in this first half. 9.43 to go in the opening 20 minutes. SNU shooting 50%. Savage Storm just 33%. Here's Bryant working to the foul line. Looking for help. Gets it out top of the key to Davis. Not a threat from there. Hands to EIA. Nearly lost it. Three on the shot clock. EIA rises up over Al Irvin and rattles in the three-pointer. Adokie EIA picking up where he left off the last time these two teams met in Shawnee. Cluett driving. Found, lost the ball, tried to get it over to Al Irvin. Loose ball and a jump ball is the call. It will stay with Southeastern with 16 on the shot clock. Bryant ripped that one away from Cluett. Bryant will check out. Javon Jackson back into the contest. Dokie EIA on fire early, three for three from deep. He's got 11 of SNU's 20 points. Inbounds comes to Leslie. Faces up on Davis on the right side. Trying to get it to clue it. Here's the transfer. Outside Leslie, three-pointer on the way. Back iron to that one. And EI, another rebound, his fourth. Strong start to this one for Doak. Doak driving left to the baseline. Finds Davis inside. Puts it up over Sternberger. Missed the shot. Here's Irvin for Southeastern on the right side. Top of the key, now Condiff. He'll drive into the paint. Got around Jackson. Finger roll, no good. Leslie working for it. Missed that tip. Comes out to clue it on the offensive rebound. Missed the three-pointer off the back iron. Tipped away from Jackson to Condiff. Here's Sternberger. Pulls up at the foul line, and he got it to go. A couple of offensive rebound opportunities there for Southeastern. Ends in a Savage Storm bucket. Here's McGuy galloping across the timeline. Trying to get hemmed in on the sideline by Southeastern, but able to evade that pressure. Davis down low. Too strong again underneath the basket. And there's Sternberger leaking out from behind. Davis flies by. Sternberger lets him and puts it in on the reverse side. Four-point game again, 20-16. to 16. Here's Jackson. Trying to evade the pressure. Gets it up ahead to Lynn. Now McGuy on the left wing, seven and a half to go first half. Do a timeout, next dead ball. Here's EIA working on Irvin to the left block. Forces it up, over Irvin, and he scores again! EIA being aggressive and getting whatever he wants early. Here's Condiff, left wing for Southeastern. Top of the key now, Leslie finds Condiff on the cut. McGuy got in the way on the pass. And that one, it looked like it went off Condiff's leg. The SNU bench certainly thought so. And that'll take us to a timeout on the court. 7.06 to play in the first half, 22 to 16. Southern Nazarene with the lead. We'll take a timeout and be back after this.
22 to 16 Southern Nazarene leads and Grant Adokia EIA. 13 points thus far tonight. Also four rebounds. He's been aggressive on both ends of the court. Yeah, and an efficient 13 points from EIA. Uh, three for three from behind the arc and five for seven overall. That is what the kids are calling impressive these days. Mo Wilson, Manny Dixon, Xavier Bryant back in for SNU. Jamison Williams, or Richardson rather. Condiff, the three-pointer off the inbound from Dixon, finds the bottom of the net. His second triple of the evening off the bench. Southeastern continuing to extend some full court pressure. Here's McGuy. Bryant between the circles, guarded by Condiff. Here's the EIA. To the left wing, top of the key, McGuy, wide open three. He won't miss many of those, and he nailed that one. SNU, six triples here in the first half. Pass nearly intercepted by Bryant, but Burns with the strong hands. Gallops in and a foul coming up. It's going to be on Xavier Bryant. That'll be number two on X. Fourth team foul on the Crimson Storm with 6.23 to go in the first half. And Brennan Burns will be at the line for two free throws. Eight for nine at the line this season. Averaged 10 points and three assists at East Central last season. Rattles in the first one. He's averaging 17 so far this season. EIA and Bryant will check out. Jackson and Moat back in for SNU. But his scoring has, Burns' scoring has gone down. 27-24, then 10-8 and eight last weekend in Colorado. He goes two for two there. Sternberger will check in for Irvin. 25-21, Southern Nazarene with the lead, shooting 53%, six of eight from deep. McGuy gets it into Jackson. Gives it back to McGuy. McGuy holding off that pressure. Here's Jackson working. Over to McGuire, left wing, left that one short all the way. Rebound is loose. Mo Wilson comes down with it. He'll send it back up top to no one. And that goes into Southeastern assistant Ryan Quinn's hands. May have been a little indecisive there. Saw Jackson open at the top of the key. And he had Moat running towards the corner. Threw right in between them. Yeah, it looked like he had two open options. Just couldn't decide which one. Condiff jumps it down to Richardson, banging with Wilson. Richardson, cut off in the paint, gets it out to Sternberger. He'll drive behind the back dribble on Dixon to the baseline, and Dixon lays on him a little bit for the foul. Be the first on Manny, fifth team foul on the Crimson Storm, so a fresh 20 for Southeastern on the right baseline. Dickinson to inbound for Southeastern. Inbounds comes to Burns. Up top, Condiff. Three-pointer is on the way, and good. Landon Condiff. Three triples in the first half off the bench. Shooting 47% from three coming in to tonight. And Tyler McGuy forced to burn a timeout with the pressure in the backcourt. Condiff, 7 of 15 from deep coming into tonight. He played just three minutes in the season opener against Wayne State, but is averaging 21 per game over the last three, including a 16-point, four three-pointer performance against Minnesota State Moorhead in the second game of the season. But he has been strong off the bench, and he and Sternberger have combined for 20 of the 24 points for Southeastern. Just three players each, Grant, have scored for the two squads thus far. EIA, Magai, and Jackson for SNU, and Condiff, Burns, and Sternberger for Southeastern. Yeah, you're right, but it's not for a lack of trying on these player uh, players' parts. You got an 0 for 3 uh, from the field, 0 for 5 from the field, and an 0 for 1 on Southeastern side, and an 0 for 3, 0 for 1, 0 for 1 on SNU's. You just got to get the ball in the hoop. Eight turnovers so far in the first half for SNU. Five for Southeastern. Ten to edge. 10 to 8 edge and points off turnovers for the Savage Storm. Mo Wilson will bring it up unadulterated for SNU. To the block, find a cutting Manny Dixon on the baseline. 
and Manny lays it in for two on the reverse side. Condiff working into the paint. Get Wilson into the air, forced it up. No good, but the foul coming up on Wilson will be his second of the evening and the sixth team foul on the Crimson Storm. And how about that backdoor pass down low to Manny Dixon? Manny Dixon constantly referred to by Adam Bohach as one of the best cutters on the team. Condiff hits the free throw to go into double figures. Richardson and Dickinson will head off as Leslie and Cluett back in. One more here for Condiff. And he knocks it down. Dixon lobs it up ahead to Jackson. Bounce pass over to Lynn, and he'll work it across the timeline. Jackson directing traffic right wing. Hesitates, drives, galloping all the way. Lost the ball, but it's because he was fouled. A sweet move there by the freshman. That's exactly what was going through my mind. You know, he's going to be freshman of the year in the GAC this year. You can write that down as a quote from me. Um, but that right there, that was just something. We'll hold you to it. <laughs> I'll buy you dinner if I'm wrong. Two free throws for Jackson. Hits the first. We'll have one more. Just under five minutes to go first half, 28-26. Second one is no good. Leslie has the miss. Here's Brennan Burns, the Bethany native, working it across the timeline. Two-point game for in favor of S SNU, 28-26. Here's Leslie right wing. Outside Sternberger on the left side. Penetrates to the foul line. Cut off there by Dixon. Here's Burns. Working outside, eight on the shot clock. Burns penetrates, rises up from the GAC logo, and it spins home. For Burns, his second field goal of the evening. Jackson will bring it up for the Crimson Storm. Some pressure from Condiff. Tied at 28, 4.15 to go. Jackson trying to get it to Davis. It was a little bit low around his ankles. Here's Condiff. Deep three-pointer this time. Hit the front of the iron and crawled in. And Landon Condiff, four triples in the first half. He's got 14 to lead all scores. In the corner, EIA penetrates, knocks down Sternberger. No call either way. Here's Jackson outside EIA, rises up for three, and it spins out this time. Cluett clears it for Southeastern. He'll bring it up along the near sideline. Gives it to Leslie, right wing. Looking for the cut, it's not there. Leslie, jab step, 18 footer is no good. That one rimmed out. Dixon with the rebound for SNU. 31-28 Southeastern with the lead. Here's Lynn, back to Jackson between the circles. Right wing now, Manny Dixon fires it down low to Davis and Leslie went through his back to deflect that pass. And that'll take us to our under four media timeout. 3-11 to go first half, 31-28. Southeastern in what's shaping up to be another great game in this long rivalry between these two schools. We'll be back with more after this break.
SNU trails by three with 3.11 to go in the first half. Tyler McGuire back in for SNU. Robert Briley back in for Southeastern. Corner three on the way for Javon Jackson. It's no good. So it rattled out. Clue it with the rebound for Southeastern. Here's Sternberger on the right wing. Working on Jalen Lynn. Now McGuire switches onto him. Top of the key, Irvin. Behind the screen from Briley. Irvin dumps it down low to Briley with EIA defending. Tried to go over to Irvin and a kickball. Going to give Southeastern a reprieve as that one was about to be a steal for SNU. Fresh 20 on the clock with 2.49 to go first half. Irvin to trigger it in, gets it into Briley. Outside Brennan Burns behind the screen. Burns can't get it into Briley. He's got the size mismatch on Lynn, and they switch back. Here's Kluett, eight on the shot clock. Finds Al Irvin outside Sternberger. Cut off on the double team. Irvin, left wing three, is on the way. It's off the back iron, no good. Javon Jackson tips the rebound and controls it himself. Jackson up ahead to McGuire on the left wing. He'll penetrate into the paint, kicks it outside EIA. He'll drive on Burns, galloping across the lane, feeds it over to Davis. In traffic, that was tipped away. And here's Irvin with it. Davis slow getting back. Irvin dragging his foot, a foul. He's going to go on SNU. Looked like Irvin got away with a the travel there. Foul's going to be on EIA. That'll be his first. The seventh team foul on SNU. Two shots upcoming for Al Irvin, the senior from Griffith, Indiana. He's dealt with injuries for a lot of his career in Durant. It's still around, still contributing for Kelly Green. First one's up and good. SNU just one of their last five from the field. Missed their last three three-point attempts. One more for Irvin, who's one for two at the foul line coming into tonight's game. And he got that one to crawl over the rim. He'll head off and Landon Condiff back in. McGuy lobs it in to EIA. It's away from the double team. Gives it up to Jackson, who will bring it up. Left wing, Jalen Lynn. Over to Jackson. Jackson leaves it up for McGuy. Quick trigger on the top of the key three. It was blocked by Briley. He goes out of play. He'll stay with SNU at 12 on the shot clock. Briley with an athletic play flying out there to get a piece of that one. Jackson. Trying to lob it up for McGuire, not tall enough. Clue it with the steal to the block. Cut off nicely there by McGuire. Condiff, three-pointer in the corner, and he got another one. Landon Condiff is shooting in a hula hoop right now. Five for five from deep. He's got 17. And the Savage Storm lead by eight, their biggest lead of the night. It's a 14-3 run over the last five minutes for Southeastern. Here's McGuire, right wing, back to EIA. He'll penetrate, float it up for Davis, catches it high, in amongst the trees, and he puts it in with the left hand. His first field goal of the night with one minute to go in the half, 36 to 30, Southeastern with the lead. Yeah, he's had trouble up until this point to score, but that's a good one to see. That'll open up, hopefully, the rim. Here's Sternberger. Jab step, drives baseline, shovels it over to Briley, through his hands, and a steal for Jalen Lynn. Lynn takes it right at Burns. Left hand shot's no good, a lot of contact, no foul. Here comes Condiff. Condiff crosses over on EIA into the paint, leaves it for Burns. And that's going to be a double dribble as Burns got that one caught on his hip. Thirty-two seconds to go in the half. Thirty. On the shot clock. The guy to trigger it in. Defense. 
McGuy between the circles, right wing to Lynn. One second difference gained to shot clock. This new holding for the last shot of the half. Trailing 36 to 30. EIA will rise and fire deep three from the top of the key. It's no good. Davis, the offensive rebound, gathers and scores. Burns didn't get the full court heave off in time, and that's how the first half is going to end here in Bethany. The Crimson Storm trail by four at the break, 36 to 32. Coming up here at halftime, we'll turn it over to midcourt where we will have the ring presentation of the SNU men's soccer team that won the Great American Conference regular season title last year. So we will keep the stream tuned on that for you and have that for your viewing pleasure as SNU recognizes their conference champion men's soccer team from last season.
and welcome back to halftime here at the Sawyer Center where Southern Nazarene trails Southeastern Oklahoma State 36-32. to Luke McConnell and Grant McNew back with you. And breaking down the first half, SNU shot 44% from the field in the first half, 6 of 13 from deep and 2 of 3 at the free throw line. Southeastern nearly identical numbers, just one more field goal for Southeastern. They were 12 of 28, 43%. 6 of 13 from deep and 6 of 6 at the foul line in those four free throws. The difference in the contest thus far, rebounding, dead even, 16 apiece. Offensive rebounds, dead even, 5 apiece. Southeastern with 7 of 6 assists to 6 for SNU. Right now the biggest difference in the game, points off turnovers, where SNU has 10 turnovers thus far, 16 points for Southeastern, 7 turnovers for Southeastern leading to 10. SNU turnovers. Six of those turnovers coming on the steel variety in Southeastern. 15 to 2 in fast break points, Grant. And we heard Adam Bohach mention at halftime of the women's game in our pregame conversation with him. He mentioned how Southeastern likes to get out and go get back quickly on offense, and that is playing out thus far here tonight. Yeah, and, and you expect Southern Nazarene to be able to respond to that, and they have, don't get me wrong, but when you have somebody on the other side, like uh, Landon Condiff that has five for five from the three-point line, this score, four, being down four points, is not really a bad spot to be. You just have to come out, and you almost have to reset, I think, defensively, uh, and say, look, you know they're going to go fast. You've seen it. You felt it. You just have to respond. This is a tough spot to be. It's a tough team to be against. And they're playing really well right now. SNU led by as many as eight in the first half. Southeastern also led by as many as eight in the first 20 minutes. And Grant looking you know, at the numbers. of Adokia EIA, 13 points, four rebounds in the first half. Tyler McGuy with nine. Nick Davis got on the board late. He has four points. Javon Jackson with four points, and Manny Dixon with two. Condiff with 17, leading the way for Southeastern. He's 5 of 5, as Grant mentioned, from three-point range. 11 points for Jet Sternberger, two points for Al Irvin, and six points for Brennan Burns. And right now, Condiff shooting, you got to think that, you know, that's not necessarily going to continue, 5 for 5 especially. Uh, but what can SNU do uh, to get limit his opportunities in the second half? You just have to focus. Uh, you know, I don't think you can change much defensively, honestly, or offensively for that matter. You just have to execute your game plan. And uh, we've seen it. It's going to be a game of runs. Uh, two really just great teams going at it. Can you weather the runs and can you come back and hit them with a run of your own? Uh, I think that's the answer of, of what to do in this ball game. Southeastern. Only hitting eight threes per game so far this season. They hit 11 per game last year, leading the team or leading the nation at points throughout the year last year. They did lose four of their top five scores from last year's squad, and three of those hitting over 60 triples over the course of the season. But so far, that has not been a problem for Southeastern here in the early going tonight. Right now, SNU unable to take advantage of the new pieces for Southeastern. And a little bit of a different look so far for Southeastern. Didn't see Southeastern really be an aggressive team defensively, but we've seen the full court press throughout pretty much the entirety of the first half, Grant. Yeah, and maybe in seasons past uh, you don't see that, but this year you expected it coming in. Again, a fast-paced game. It's 36-32, not going to be anything outrageous in the final score uh, more than likely, but, you know, SNU's done fine breaking the press. They've got a couple simple turnovers, but for the most part, it's not been a big factor against their offense. So we're just about ready to start the second half here in Bethany. As soon as we get the officials back out here. Both teams are out here and looking ready to go, but none of the officials have emerged yet. And as fun as it would be to watch these two teams call their own fouls, I think both coaches <laughs> would prefer 
the stripes to be out here. Here they come right at the timer buzzer. Shaping up to be another great finish here between these two schools. So we have seen time and again over the past several seasons really going back to that double overtime win for SNU in the 2018 GAC semifinals. And from that point forward, pretty much every game between these two schools has been a classic. SNU basketball to start the second half. And pressure comes immediately from Southeastern. RJ Weeks starting lineups back out there for both schools, including RJ Weeks, who played just five minutes in the first half for Southeastern due to foul trouble. Bryant's holding right side, down low to Davis. Got Cluett in the air. Missed the left-hand hook shot as it just bounced around the rim. Man, you like the look you got there. Took seven dribbles to get it down low. Good passing. Just missed the shot. Weeks trying to drive baseline, and Tyler McGuy with good defense just ran him right into the baseline, and that's a turnover for Southeastern. Bryant gets it up ahead to McGuy. Working on the right side. Left side, Jalen Lynn in front of the bench of SNU. Down low to Davis. Working on Leslie. Backing down. Skips it out. EIA, right wing three. On the way. It rattled out. No good. A couple good looks for SNU. Just rattling in and out here in the early going of the second half. Minute gone by. Cluett will try a deep three. That's off the iron. No good. Goes over the backboard over to the Crimson Storm. And that ball can't be much more in without falling on this other side. Seen a couple of those tonight for SNU, particularly for Nick Davis. That one poked away from Bryant by Weeks, and it goes out of bounds off Xavier Bryant. The first turnover of the second half for SNU. No points either way here in the second 20 minutes thus far. 36-32. Southeastern with the lead. Great American Conference opener for both school odds. Here's Irvin. Turns the corner on Bryant all the way in. Off the glass. And good. And the foul. A foul will be on Xavier Bryant. And that will be his third personal foul. Al Irvin with his first field goal of the night. Looking to finish off the three-point play. Missed the free throw. So Bryant will remain out there for at least this possession. SNU trailing by six, 38-32. Javon Jackson set to check in next dead ball. Here's Bryant on the right wing. Drives to the baseline. Bounce pass for Nick Davis. Knocked away from him by R.J. Weeks. And Weeks comes up with a loose ball. Galloping down the far side. Dumps it down low to Cluett. Rejected by Davis off the backboard. Xavier Bryant is down on the far end. He took the brunt of the contact on that. Corner three. Tyler McGuire. That one's short. And here comes Sternberger the other way for Southeastern. Irvin out to Leslie. Leslie working on Bryant. Kicks it out. Weeks. Pump fakes. Drives in. And a foul coming up on SNU. It's going to be Tyler McGuy picking up the foul. His first. Second team foul in the Crimson Storm. Bryant will head off as Javon Jackson checks in. 17-49 to play. Inbounds comes to Cluett. Quick trigger on the corner three. That one's long. Davis up high for the rebound. His second. Jalen Lynn on the left wing, behind the screen from Davis. In the corner, McGuy. Sternberger flies by. McGuy calmly off the backboard. Not good enough. And here comes Southeastern. Sternberger gives it up to Irvin, left wing. To the foul line. Clue it. Down low to Leslie, who's got Jalen Lynn on him. Size mismatch. Leslie tried to go for Irvin. Irvin corrals the loose ball. Now Leslie, bounce pass down to Cluett, nine on the shot clock. Cluett to the cutting 
Sternberger knocked out of play by EIA with six on the shot clock. So SNU starts the half 0 for 4 offensively. Nearly three minutes gone by, trailing by six, 38-32. Weeks out to Sternberger. Drives, baseline. Cut off on the double team. Out to Leslie. Quick trigger on the three as the shot clock expires, and he got nothing but net. Leslie with his first bucket of the night after an 0 for 6 start. Here's EIA on the right wing with it with SNU trailing by 9. Davis on the right block. Banging with Leslie. Cut off. And a foul coming up on Al Irvin as he reached in on Nick Davis. That'll send Nick Davis to the line for two free throws. Davis 79% at the charity stripe this season. It's his first trip tonight. Kelly Green not pleased that this is a shooting foul. First one from Nick is off the mark. Manny Dixon will check in for Jalen Lynn. Brennan Burns will check in for Irvin. Landon Condiff will check in for weeks as well for Southeastern. 41-32, Southeastern with the lead, 16-39 to play. Second free throw on the way from Davis. Off the back iron, no good. Rebound fought for, and Burns is the one who comes away with it. Racing into the front court. Gets it back from Leslie. Outside, right wing three for Leslie. In and out, no good. The rims repay one for SNU there. Here's Jackson for SNU. Behind the screen from Magai. Poked away by Cluett. Jackson goes to the floor, saves it to Magai. And Magai is going to be called for a travel. He slid about two inches there, Grant. Yeah, that's, that's one of the those. definition of ticky tack. Yeah, yeah, ticky tack is is definitely the term there. Um, I think most of the time you're gonna get the timeout called for you, just not there. So another turnover for SNU, their 13th of the night. Here's Burns between the circles, right side to Condiff. Thought about the three, instead he'll drive to the baseline on EIA. Cut off there nicely by Doak. Hands to Sternberger in the corner. Sternberger works it out to the right wing. Sizing up Manny Dixon. He'll drive baseline. And now a foul coming up on Manny Dixon. Adam Bohotch not pleased. It's going to be number two on Manny, and that'll take us to our under-16 timeout. 41-32. Southern Nazarene trailing Southeastern with 15.55 to play. We'll be back after this break. Welcome back. Southeastern with the basketball and a fresh 20 on the shot clock. Inbounds comes to Sternberger. He'll drive baseline. Force it up. Blocked by Jackson and a foul. Coming up on the freshman, Javon. Actually, they're going to give that to Manny Dixon. Which makes more sense because it looked like Jackson got all ball there. So that'll be 
A quick third foul on Manny Dixon. 15-51 to play. Four team fouls already on SNU. Jet Sternberger at the line where he's perfect. A perfect 22 of 22. And the announcer jinx works well in our favor on that one as he misses his first free throw of the season. I can't believe you pulled it off. Second one on the way from Sternberger. Also no good, but Cluett gets the rebound for Southeastern. Burns to the baseline. Had it knocked away by EIA. He retrieves the dribble with 15 on the shot clock. Sixth offensive rebound for Southeastern tonight. Down low, Cluett working on EIA. Cluett off the glass. Looked like EIA got a piece of that. Three on the shot clock for Condiff. And he stepped on the sideline while being guarded by Manny Dixon. So a turnover there for Southeastern. Good defense there for SNU off the offensive rebound. But the Crimson Storm still scoreless in the second half. 0 for 4 from the field with three turnovers. McGuire in the middle of the court gives it up to EIA. Three on two here if SNU hurries. Outside, Javon Jackson steps into the three. It's off the back iron, no good. And Cluett has the rebound and a foul coming up on Mo Wilson trying to poke that away from him. That's foul number five on SNU. Southeastern shooting 91% from the foul line as a team this season. Just 14 attempts per game. But certainly something to be cognizant of here over the next several moments. That's number three on Mo Wilson. Burns takes the freshman Jackson all the way in. Missed the shot wildly. Leslie missed the putback equally wildly. Kelly Green wanting a foul. Didn't look like there was much contact there. Both shots. Just terrible shots. Here's McGuy hiding behind Wilson. He'll knife into the paint. Kicks it out for Jackson. A jab step. He'll drive all the way in. Left hand shot is good from the paint. Both coaches less than pleased on the officiating as Burns knocks in the right elbow jumper on the other end very quickly to push the lead back to nine at 43-34. Wilson. Over Leslie, missed the shot on the fast break. Here's Burns with it. Drives past Jackson in the corner, Sternberger. Three-pointer on the way is short. And that one careens out of bounds. It'll be SNU basketball. Fresh three here for Southeastern as Irvin, Briley, and Dickinson come in. Leslie, Cluett, and Sternberger will take a seat. Nick Davis will check in for McGuy. And EIA will take a seat as Xavier Bryant back in. Wilson inbounding in the corner by Southeastern's bench and has to burn a timeout to save the possession. So 30-second timeout here. Grant will keep it here. SNU just one of seven to start the second half and has seen this four-point deficit balloon to nine. Southeastern not much better at just three of ten, so the Crimson Storm have had some really good looks here in the second half, just have not been able to get them to fall. Yeah, and we've seen a couple go in and out or rattle around. Um, and open shots, too. You saw Javon Jackson miss the three in transition. That's one he's usually going to hit. It's just a fact of still putting the ball up confidently. If you lose your confidence, you put your head down, then you're going to stop hitting good shots and you're going to lose the basketball game. Crimson Storm down to 38% shooting. They're 6 of 16. They've missed their last eight three-pointers. Southeastern not shooting much better at 39%. So it seems to be, thanks to the volume of threes, it's a Moderately high-scoring game, given the fact that both teams are shooting under 40% at this point. Kind of a weird weird balance there. Just a reminder, this is the only Wednesday game in the conference tonight. Tomorrow night, got Washita Baptist at Harding, Oklahoma Baptist at Southwestern, East Central at Northwestern, Southern Arkansas is at Henderson State, and Arkansas Monticello. Is that Arkansas Tech? Same five out there for both squads out of the timeout. 
Wilson triggered in, gets it into Bryant. Double team comes, Bryant threads the needle to Wilson. Wilson forces the issue. Outside Manny Dixon, lets Briley fly by. It's caught up. Now Jackson finds Wilson on the baseline, forces it up through a lot of contact. Late whistle, but the correct whistle nonetheless. As Wilson missed the shot, he will go to the line for two free throws. The foul is on Briley. It'll be his first, just the second on the Savage Storm here in the second half. Mo Wilson at the line for two free throws. Two for two there so far this season. He's got four rebounds and two assists tonight while being scoreless. First one on the way is short. They'll have one more. Second one from Mo is good. So it's an eight-point lead for Southeastern, 14 minutes to play, 43-35. Here's Irvin on the right side behind the screen from Dickinson. Pass looking for Briley, knocked away by Wilson, but Irvin retrieves. He's got Nick Davis on him now. Irvin, looked like he traveled, no call. Here's Dickinson. That one's poked away by Bryant. Dickinson gets it. Jackson ripped it away, recovered by Briley. Briley forces up, blocked again, and Wilson recovers it. Good defensive possession there. Here's Wilson galloping down the lane. All the way to the basket, and he laid it in. Defense rolls into offense. You saw it there. Kelly Green wanted the timeout. The officials didn't see him, so he said play on. Here's Dickinson. Looked like a carry. He's got Jackson, the freshman, on him. Dixon backing in. Wilson poked it away. Dickinson gets it back. Sends it up top to Irvin with 10 on the shot clock. Here's Burns. Pulls up from 18. Left it short. Dixon, the rebound, had it ripped away by Dickinson. He stepped on the end line trying to save it. And it'll be SNU basketball. The starters return for Southeastern with Irvin going off and Burns staying on. Sternberger, Cluett, Weeks, and Leslie back in for Southeastern. Wilson gets it in the corner to Bryant. Jackson going to have to hurry up the court. Here's Bryant. Gets it across the timeline. Just a second to spare. Left side, Bryant now on the block to Davis on the left side. Into the paint, absorbs the contact from Leslie. Missed the shot. Wilson flies in, saves the rebound to Dixon. Mo Wilson giving so much energy. Davis, reverse layup, no good. And Nick Davis just cannot get the shots to fall right now. Here's Leslie, hands back to Sternberger, knifing down the lane, and a foul coming up on SNU. It's going to go on Mo Wilson. That's going to be number four, and he looks like he caught a shot in the face as a result. Man, Nick Davis struggling to score the basketball. But his moves are getting him open. He's playing well with the ball in his hand, just can't get it to fall. They initially ruled a shooting foul, but one of the other officials overruled the other, saying it was on the floor. And now Kelly Green incensed over there on the southeastern sideline. Here's Sternberger into the paint. Trip, lost the ball, and here's Bryant with it, coming the other way. Here's Jackson. Cut off by Leslie on the baseline. He'll dribble it back out up top. The guy left wing in the corner. Dixon pump fakes. Drives on Leslie. Kicks it back out. Jackson left wing triple on the way. And good from the freshman. And it's a three-point game with 12 minutes to go. Here come the Crimson Storm. And a touch foul up top. Called on the freshman Jackson. That'll be his first and will take us to our under-12 timeout. 43 to 40, Southeastern with the lead, SNU knifing back into this one. Emotions running high. They'll be high for the next 12 minutes. We'll be back with more after this.
Welcome back to the Sawyer Center. Luke McConnell, Grant McNew with you as the Crimson Storm trail by three to Southeastern Oklahoma State, 43 to 40. That last foul on Javon Jackson was the team's seventh. So one and one, and free throws the rest of the way for Southeastern, and that a little bit of trouble for the Crimson Storm. Southeastern shooting 91% on 14 attempts per game this season. It'll be Brennan Burns at the line, who came into the night 8 of 9 at the line. He's 2 for 2 tonight with 8 points. Bethany Native dips, extends, and misses. And Davis snatches the rebound for SNU. Here's Bryant between the circles. McGuire on the right wing trying to get it down low to EIA. It's not there. Behind the screen from Davis. Now right wing EIA. Davis calling for it. EIA into the paint. Steps around Sternberger. Puts it in off the glass. First bucket of the second half for Doak, and it's a one-point game. 8-0 run for SNU. Here's Burns on the right wing. Outside, Leslie. Three-pointer to answer. Skips over the rim. No good. Bryant for SNU. Long lead pass up ahead for Duke. And he lays it in for the lead. Timeout, Southeastern. Southern Nazarene on a 10-0 run, and they've retaken the lead in Sawyer. And Grant, it's been the defense clamping down over the last couple minutes that has keyed this rally. Man, the defense and that full court pass to find Doak open. Man, left-handed layup, that's beautiful to take the lead. 10-0 run over the last 327. Southeastern, one of their last eight from the field. And Grant SNU started the second half cold, but Southeastern hasn't exactly been on fire here in the second half and by any stretch. And so SNU's been able to finally see the shot start to fall and see the fruit of their defensive labor on the other end. Yeah, I said it earlier in the game. It's going to be a game of runs. You saw a run to get up by nine from Southeastern. And you said, just wait, SNU is going to have one of their own. Here we see it. They take the lead back. Keep things rolling, Luke. You have to. That's what you have to be saying in the huddle right now. Keep things rolling. Because if you don't, Southeastern will jump right back out on you. A little bit of ugly for you. Both teams are combined one of eight from the foul line here in the second half. 0 for 4 for Southeastern. Here's Leslie between the circles for Southeastern. Weeks on the left side. Now up top, Leslie back to our cut. R.J. Weeks put it in on the two-handed dunk. He got past the freshman, Jackson. And Southeastern retakes the lead emphatically on that one from R.J. Weeks. His first bucket of the night. What a way to get your first bucket. Bryant, left elbow, Nick Davis. Outside, McGuire. The guy has not scored here in the second half. Jackson behind the Davis screen. Knives into a crowd of blue. Outside McGuire. Five on the shot clock. Now Bryant. Run off the line by Weeks. Here's Jackson. Step back three-pointer on the way. That one's short. Davis up high for the offensive rebound. Puts it back up and in. You say he's two for nine. Why is he still in the game? That right there is why. Sternberger got past Davis. Bump from behind. No call. Got his own miss and put it back in. Back and forth on the teeter-totter we go. 47-46 Southeastern with 10 minutes to play. EIA wide open left wing three. And that's a splash city from Duke. His fourth triple of the night. He's got 20. Here's Burns. Drives to the baseline. Got past McGuy. Leaves it in the middle of the paint for Leslie. Left that one short. Davis might have gotten a piece of it. Sternberger saves it. Back up to Burns. 13 on the shot clock. Burns from the left elbow, the pull-up, it's good. And Brennan Burns continues to be a thorn in SNU's side here in Sawyer. Different team, different jersey, same result for the Bethany native. Tied at 49, 9.15 to play, Burns has 10. Doak between the circles, goes behind the screen from Davis. Step back three-pointer from EIA, that one's short all the way. And here's Cluett. Working up, leaves it back for Sternberger. Sternberger drives on Bryant, cut off there, outside Cluett. 
to the right elbow. Finds Sternberger in the corner. Tries to drive. Cut off nicely by Bryant. Clue it. Deep right wing three. Oh, and he got it. Deep three from Cody Cluett. Put Southeastern back up by three, 52-49. Up ahead, Javon Jackson, open tray. Two answer, and he does. The freshman with 12. Here's Sternberger, corner three the other way. Almost wedgied that one between the rim and backboard. Davis with the rebound for SNU, and here comes the Crimson Storm. Right side, Jackson. Now Bryant gives it to McGuire, right wing. Davis wants it, pass deflected, stolen by Burns. Here's Burns galloping. Stops at the foul line. Got caught in the air, gives it out for Cluett. That three-pointer's no good. Davis up high for the rebound for Southern Nazarene. We're under eight minutes to play. Do a timeout next stoppage. Tied at 52. And a reaching foul coming on Brennan Burns, and that might have been get us to a break kind of foul. That'll be the second on Burns. And we'll head to our under eight timeout. Tied at 52, 746 to play here in Bethany between Southeastern and Southern Nazarene. We'll be back after this timeout. A nice alternative. Welcome back to the Sawyer Center. We are tied at 52, 746 to play. And Grant, the second half has really livened up over the last couple of minutes. Yeah, that's a bit of an understatement, I think. We've seen over 43-point shots this game. In the second half, we've really seen them fall. Yes, and new basketball out of the timeout after the foul on Burns. Southeastern comes out in a 2-3 zone out of the timeout. Nick Davis on the bench along with Jackson and EIA. Here's Bryant working on Richardson, fading away in the paint, and it crawls over the rim and in. First bucket of the night for Xavier Bryant. And SNU back on the high side, 54-52. Irvin outside Condiff, wide open three, and he got another one. His first shot attempt of the second half left off exactly where he started the game. He's now 6 of 6 from deep. Here's Dixon driving. Leaves it back for Wilson. Went up to put Richardson on a poster, and Richardson fouled him to prevent that. I think I would have liked to see an alley-oop pass there. Maybe it would make it easier to actually score instead of forcing the foul. Not that you don't like the foul in this situation. Well, Wilson got... Hit in the eye, taking a second to collect himself. He's at the line for the second time tonight. And really, granted, it was Mo Wilson's energy a couple of minutes ago with SNU down nine that really started this run. Bounces in the first free throw. One more coming for the senior, the Northwest Classen High School product right here in Oklahoma City. And he rattles it in. Mo Wilson, three for four from the foul line tonight. And five for six for the season now. Sternberger, wide outside on the right side. 
Now Irvin drives left. Cut off by Magai. Looking for help. Still looking for help. Finally gets it to Richardson. Richardson outside Sternberger. Five on the shot clock. Sternberger tried to get Wilson in the air. He didn't. Gets it over to Irvin, who knocks down the three-pointer. First triple of the season for Al Irvin, who came in one for eight from the field this year. And that's the third three-pointer for Southeastern that's come right at the shot clock buzzer. Manny Dixon cut off on the drive. Outside Magai. Three to answer. Yes, sir! Haymakers just being traded back and forth between these two squads. Irvin tried to get it to the cutting condiff, kicked away by Wilson. Fresh 20 for Southeastern. The guy will check out Nick Davis back in. Jackson and EIA will check back in for Lynn and Bryant. You know, Grant, I rashly said that we probably wouldn't have a repeat of last year's game in Bethany. Well, we're getting pretty close. An offensive <laughs> foul coming up on Richardson on the moving screen, trying to free up Jet Sternberger. That'll be the second foul on Richardson. The fifth team foul on Southeastern. No Southeastern players with more than two personal fouls. Bounce pass comes to Nick Davis. And a foul coming up on Jet Sternberger for undercutting Nick Davis there. Just caught, caught wrong place, wrong time there. Richardson checks out. Kyle Leslie back in. So that's the sixth team foul on Southeastern. So one and one for SNU next time Southeastern commits an infraction. Wilson gets it into Jackson in the backcourt. Jackson, double team, gets it up ahead to Wilson. Wilson, knifing down the lane, lobs it up for Davis. Outside, EIA, quick trigger on the three. No good. Wilson tips the rebound around. Dixon tips it. EIA secures it. Knocked away by Cluett. It goes off EIA's foot. Wilson diving to the floor. Saves the possession and a timeout. Wow. What hustle. Goodness gracious. <laughs> I don't know if I'm more impressed with the play or with you being able to keep up with the play. That's that's just adrenaline right there <laughs> on both sides. So SNU secures the possession, still 17 on the shot clock. Southeastern's gotten 11 offensive rebounds this evening. Just six second chance points, though. SNU with just four second chance points on eight offensive rebounds. Both teams with 10 made three-pointers, a one-point edge in free throws for Southeastern. SNU with one more bucket. S interestingly, Grant, it's the mid-range that has been the difference today. SNU 24 to 14 on points in the paint, but Southeastern with 14 buckets outside of the paint tonight. Obviously 10 of those coming from three. Some interesting production from the mid-range for Southeastern here this evening. Never let them say the mid-range is dead. The mid-range will never die. There's Jackson doubled up near mid-court. Pass deflected, but Wilson has it. Finds Dixon on the right wing. He'll take Sternberger to the baseline. Hang off the glass. No good, but a foul coming up on the Savage Storm. Foul's going to be on Sternberger. That'll be his second and push the Savage Storm over the foul limit. So one and one both ways. Manny now, Dixon at the line for two free throws. To add on to the mid-range, you know, it's not dead, of course. If somebody has a good mid-range shot, that really opens up your game because defensively you can't commit fully to a drive to the basket knowing all it takes is one stop and it's a bucket. Just a tip to young basketball players. Indeed. Burns back in for Irvin. Dixon goes two for two at the line. 
Three-point lead for SNU, 61-58. SNU led by as many as eight in the first half. Southeastern's led by as many as nine tonight. Here's Condiff all the way in. Hanging shot, no good. Rebound tipped around. Wilson controls. Jackson up top, guarded by Burns. The freshman gives it to Wilson, top of the foul circle. Jackson, entry pass down low to Davis, secures the wide pass, 10 on the shot clock. Here's Davis, working on Leslie, forces it up with the right hand, and Nick Davis puts SNU up by five. Here's Burns on the near sideline, behind a couple screens, get matched up on the freshman, and a reaching foul coming up on Javon Jackson. It's going to be the second foul on Javon Jackson, and Brennan Burns will go to the line for a one-and-one. One. Jackson and Wilson will check out Bryant and Magai back in for SNU. Burns' first free throw is good. He's got 11. Three for four at the line tonight. That ends a 7-0 SNU run. Second one also good. Officials checking the scorebook or something. Not sure what that stoppage was all about. <laughs> but something not to be overlooked, SNU picked up their seventh team foul with 12 minutes to play. And that was their first foul since. That's been as key as anything. EIA, got to get it across, he does. EIA, knives in, back to it, lob for Davis, and he throws it down with two hands. Finally got his hands on a good one, and he put it where it's supposed to be. Burns, the jumper over Davis as Davis went skittering backward on the crossover. Back to a three-point lead for SNU. McGuy up ahead for Dixon. Dixon challenges Leslie off the glass too strong that time. Looked like Davis was ready for another one. Here's Burns on the left wing. Out to Condiff, another three on the way. He finally missed one, and Davis has the rebound. Under four to play, 65-62. Southern Nazarene with the lead. Bryant will walk it across half court. Mo Wilson set to check in next dead ball, which will be our under four timeout. Pass from Magai, intercepted by Condiff. Condiff taking it right at Magai all the way in, and he lays it in for two. Good job by Magai staying vertical and not committing the foul. It's a one-point game again, 65-64. Magai to Dixon on the right side. Skip pass to EIA. And SNU will take some time here. 3.07 to go, 65-64. Southern Nazarene with the lead. Here's EIA. Driving kick to Bryant. 10 on the clock. Bryant. Working on Cluett, forces his way in. No shot, but a foul coming up on Cluett. And it'll be a one and one for Xavier Bryant when we come back. 2.56 to play at the Sawyer Center. 65-64, Southern Nazarene with a one point lead over the Savage Storm. We'll be back after this break.
Welcome back to the Sawyer Center. A thrilling finish coming up between Southern Nazarene and Southeastern Oklahoma State. 65-64, the Crimson Storm with the lead. Xavier Bryant with a one-and-one -one opportunity coming out of the timeout. No free throw attempts for Bryant tonight. 80% so far this season through four games. And Bryant knocks down the first one calmly. One more for Bryant to push this back to a three-point lead. It's under three minutes to play. Second one is good. Davis back in. Mo Wilson will check out. Burns to the right elbow. Back cut for Kyle Leslie. Wow. As he got behind Nick Davis and laid it in with the left hand. One point lead again for SNU. Bryant gets it across half court. Adam Bohotch calls out the signals from the sideline. Foul circle. Here's McGuy, guarded by Burns. Dixon. Drives on Condiff, all the way to the basket, forced it up through, contact and a foul. Foul's gonna be on Condiff. That'll be his first. The ninth team foul on Southeastern, and Manny Dixon at the line for two free throws. Dixon's first free throw rattles in. Senior from Trenton, New Jersey, averaging six points so far this season. Started the first two games of the year, has come off the bench the last three. That one rattles off no good. Leslie secured the rebound. Southeastern can take the lead with a three. Two minutes to play. 68-66, SNU with the lead. Here's Cluett holding well away from the basket. Now Leslie, left wing. Drives by Davis all the way in. Black try Davis off the backboard. The second emphatic denial by Nick Davis tonight. And SNU can make it a two possession game with a bucket here, 140 to go. EIA ends up with it. Back to Bryant between the circles. 10 on the clock. Here's EIA with a full head of steam to the basket. He lays it in. Sternberger quickly back the other way. Gives it to Burns. Burns trying to answer all the way in. Blocked by Davis again. Burns gets it back. Condiff, three-pointer, back ironed it. Dixon up high for the rebound for SNU. 1-10 to go. Here's Dixon across the timeline. Back to Bryant. Bryant will drive by Sternberger. Lost the ball. That's because he was fouled from behind by Jet Sternberger. And that'll be two free throws for Xavier Bryant with 1.02 to play. That's that Trey Young little hesitation before the drive forces the defender to run into you from behind. Great play. First one from X on the way in, good. One more for the senior from Dallas, and he knocks it down. Full two possession game for SNU, 72 to 66 with 102 to play. Bryant and McGuy check out, Wilson and Lynn back in. Hefty defensive lineup here for SNU. As we come down the stretch, Burns picks it up, dashes into the front court. Here's Sternberger, drives, baseline, and he missed the layup. Dixon let him go, and Sternberger too strong with the layup. Lynn up ahead to EIA. EIA got to get it across half court. And a timeout called by Adam Bohotch. 
to save. Saving the possession, Bohach thought he had crossed half court before he called the timeout. Officials saying he did not. So SNU will have to get the ball across the timeline quickly out of the timeout. So still discussion being had. I think Bo Hodge wants them to take a look at it. I'm not sure if that's a reviewable play. I'm not either. So SNU is out of timeouts. They're going to review and it. So they are going to actually review this. Learn something new here tonight, that this is a reviewable play. Who knew? So no. SNU leading by six, 46 seconds to play. If you have the right mindset, any play is a reviewable play. That is true. And hence the problem with modern day replay, <laughs> which is a soapbox that we will say for another time in another place, probably on a podcast near you, if we're being honest. So SNU leads by six, 46 seconds to go in this one. The officials are currently reviewing whether or not SNU had crossed midcourt by the time the timeout was called. I didn't. And it looks at like first they glance. did not. At first I don't glance, think they did either. Yeah. Oh, a six point lead. You think you've got to pass across the line here. And I'll be completely honest. I've never been quite sure if the timeout is called in the backcourt if you have the remaining time to get it across or if you have a fresh 10. I honestly cannot remember. I'm We're about to find pretty out. Pretty confident that it resets. But I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Bryant trying to <laughs> get the call to be on the other side of half court. Entry pass comes into EIA, who's fouled from behind quickly. So EIA, who has not gone to the foul line yet today, at the line for two free throws, 81% this season. The senior from Putnam City North misses the first free throw. He'll have one more to make it a three-possession lead. Second one from Doak is pure, and it's a seven-point lead. Manny Dixon and Tyler McGuire will check out. Here's Burns. Hard screen from Leslie. Burns all the way to the basket. Outside Condit. Top of the key. Leslie. Three-pointer is on the way. It's no good. Lynn and EIA collide for the rebound and a foul coming up on Southeastern. It's going to go on Cluett. Man, that is not a shot that Leslie typically misses. Southeastern bench wanting a jump ball. Kelly Green and Ryan Quinn thought that Cluett had the basketball there. But the foul called on Cody Cluett. So Jalen Lynn, who is scoreless tonight, just one field goal attempt tonight, be at the line for two free throws. These are his first free throw attempts of the season for the senior from Collierville, Tennessee, and he calmly knocks down the first. I'll give him a quadruple single. Second one from Jalen's no good. But it's an eight-point lead. Here's Burns into the front court. Picks up his dribble, looking for help. Here's Sternberger, forces up a three-pointer. It's off the iron, no good. Bryant comes in for the rebound. He's double-teamed in the corner. Gets it up ahead to EIA, reaching foul on Sternberger with 20 seconds to play. And it looks like SNU 
will get out of here with a big conference opening win tonight. The metaphorical nail is in the metaphorical coffin. Well, here's EIA at the line. And first one rattles off. We'll hold off on the hammer just for a moment. Second one from EIA is good. My guy back in, Lynn will check out. 20 seconds to play, 75-66. Southern Nazarene with the lead. Inbounds comes to Burns on the near side. Quickly into the front court. Drives by EIA, pulls up at the foul line, left it short. Magai in there for the rebound. And Southeastern going to back off a little bit. And Southern Nazarene going to get the big comeback victory and win this one 75-66 to over Southeastern Oklahoma State to begin Great American Conference play with a win and move to 3-2 and two overall this season. And Grant, this was a gritty win. Things were not looking good early second half when SNU was down nine. But a big run got them back in the game, got the lead, and then it was just weathering the back and forth there for a little while. Yeah, it was scary and a lot of weathering with two storms on the court tonight. But that was definitely at least for a little bit a scary game to be a part of. Very entertaining. We saw a thunder dunk late in the second half from Davis. But overall, I think this is a good win. I think this is two powerhouses in the GAC going at it. A treat to witness. Indeed. These two teams always seem to deliver whenever they're on the court together. And it's a, always a pleasure to be able to watch these two in action. Let's run through the final numbers for you here this evening. 48% shooting for SNU. 10 of 23 from three-point range, 43.5%, and 15 of 23 at the foul line. 13 of 20 in the second half as Southeastern went just two of six from the foul line in the second half. Southeastern shot just 38% for the game. 10 of 26 from three, good for 38.5%, and eight of 12 at the foul line. SNU ended up with a slight edge on the board. Southeastern a 12-8 edge in offensive rebounding tonight but an even 6-6 six to six on second chance points. 15 turnovers for SNU tonight led to 20 Southeastern points. 12 turnovers for Southeastern led to 13 SNU points tonight. And SNU with a 30-18 to 18 edge in points in the paint. 19-6 an edge for Southeastern in fast break points, but just an even 4-4 four four in the second half. Grant, and I think that was as key as anything. SNU really limited Southeastern's opportunities to run in the second half after giving up 15 fast break points in the first half. Yeah, they got back quick. That was the thing. And um, just aggressive defense. You saw a lot of confidence in SNU's feet to move quickly and stay in front of uh, the offense without fouling. We saw a couple reach ins and hand checking fouls, but. Really, for the most part, in that second half, there was a lot of just great lower body defense. Leading the way for SNU was the Dokie EIA, 24 points and five rebounds for Doke tonight. He was one of four players in double figures for SNU. 12 points for Javon Jackson, 12 for Tyler McGuy, 10.7 rebounds, four blocks for Nick Davis. All of the emphatic variety. Six points for Xavier Bryant, 5.7 rebounds. For Mo Wilson, five points for Mandy Dixon and a single point for Jalen Lynn to close out the scoring tonight. 22 points for Landon Condiff, six of eight from three-point range tonight. 14 for Brennan Burns, 13 for Jet Sternberger, seven for Al Irvin, two for R.J. Weeks, five for Kyle Leslie, and three and 12 rebounds for Cody Cluett, rounding out the stats for Southeastern. SNU on the road on Saturday. They'll be in Ada taking on East Central, 1 o'clock tip time for the women and 3 o'clock tip time for the men from the Kerr Activity Center in Ada on Saturday. We'll step aside, and when we come back, we'll have our player of the game and SNU head coach Adam Bohach for our post-game interview. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this.
Welcome back to the Sawyer Center. Southern Nazarene knocks off Southeastern today, 75 to 66. The final score. I'm joined by a Dokie EIA, 24 points tonight for the senior from Putnam City North. And Doak, first of all, congratulations on the win. A tough one to start conference play against a really good Southeastern team. First off, thank you. And yeah, a tough one. You know, Southeastern defending conference champs, so we knew it wasn't going to be easy. First home game, though, so you know that helps a lot. And we just wanted to be aggressive. You got off to a great start there in that first half. Uh, what was opening up for you offensively there in that first half? Just my guys finding me, uh, having big gaps. Nick, he's such a big presence in the post, so that helps a lot. You know, people come double him, X finding people, Ty, another great player. So, you know, that just makes the gaps big and just being unselfish and just getting to, the, to, get to our spots. When you're in the flow of the game, how do you kind of gauge when it's kind of your time to, to be aggressive? I mean, you were really getting after it there in that first half, getting to the basket early in the game. How do you kind of gauge when it's your time to really get after it offensively? I mean, as a team, we just do what we do best. So, you know, getting downhill is one of the things I do best. So just from the jump, just doing that, that helps everyone, everyone doing what they do best. So that, that just makes the team way better, offense way smoother. You guys are down nine early in that second half. How big is it to have a veteran team where you're in a situation like that or you're with a bunch of guys who aren't going to panic or just going to take it one possession at a time? How big is that? S super big because, I mean, we know it's going to be like that. You know, conference conference play starts, we know it's not going to be easy. So just having a veteran group, helping the young guys, you know, us taking accountability and just knowing that adversity is going to strike sometime in the game, we just got to be able to handle it, and we did tonight. What did you guys do differently there to claw your way back into the, that game at that point and retake the lead? Uh, we didn't do nothing too much too much different. Just stop turning it over. We know if we get a shot, you know, we're going to we're gonna score the ball. Just the numbers don't lie. Percentages, we're going to put the ball in the hoop. So just not turning it over. We didn't do anything different. Just play with our strengths, and that's what we did the whole game. How big of a lift is it for you guys to start conference play with a win against a really good team like that and get off to the right start in GAC play? It helps a lot. You know, we just build a lot of conf confidence, but – it's not going to be easy from, you know, from now. So we just got to keep building on this and just keep doing what we do. Well, Dope, congratulations on the win and look forward to seeing you guys on Saturday. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. You bet. We'll be back with Adam Bohatch right after this. Welcome back. We're joined by SNU head coach Adam Bohanch. And Adam, first of all, congratulations on the win. Another terrific matchup between you and another really good team. Yeah, it was a good game, uh, Luke. Uh, back and forth for sure. And, and man, I thought Southeastern really played well. Um, you know, uh, number 24 really got hot there in the, the first half when it seemed like we kind of had a little bit of traction. And boy, he jumped up and made five of them, I think, in the first half. And um, you know, we, we lost him a couple times and, and then, you know, couldn't get to him in transition a few times after turnovers. And, um, and then, you know, the start of the second half, um, you know, missed some really good shots where you could tell we were a little tight or a little pressing on the offensive end. And, and then it, it got to nine or, or maybe even more than nine. And, and then, boy, I thought we played really well, um, you know, the rest of the way. When, when your guys are, are you know, like you said, tight like that. What's your message to them to, to kind of help them relax in those moments? It, it's not a message. You know, they just want to do well. Um, and um, and so there's there's no problem with that, you know. Um, I mean, we're getting it right there at the rim, and it, it sounds funny, but, I mean, it's almost harder for Nick to, to make that little touch shot when you're that close than it is to just jump up and rip that thing off. Um, and I think he was caught in between, you know, ripping it off or, or, you know, laying it in a couple times and then got a little tentative. And so the thing that was, was really encouraging, Luke, was like the way Luke, uh, Nick responded, right? I mean, he's, he's struggling and he's playing really poor around the basket, you know, offensively. And, and he still, I thought, was a big factor defensively. And, and then he finished the game with some super strong finishes and some really good rebounds. And, um, so proud of him for, for being able to stay the course and still impact the game. Um, just having some bad plays, not allowing that to turn into a bad game. Um, and so that's real growth um, and, and was really good. When you guys were down nine, 
looked like Mo Wilson was a guy who really turned up the energy level and everyone seemed to follow his lead. How huge were those moments? Yeah, Mo was terrific tonight and has been terrific for a week. Um, you know, and, and you say it and you take it for granted, but, but he played like a senior tonight, right? Um, there was no ball that he wasn't trying to get. There was no ball that he didn't touch. Um, you know, he was passing knowledge the whole time and made some tremendous plays um, and, and then, you know, stepped the line and, and made some super big free throws. So um, super proud of, Nick, of Mo, but you're right, uh, Luke. He, he played really, really well. How big is it to have – a group of guys that are veterans that have been in situations like that before. There's no no panic in those moments like that. Just taking it one possession at a time and not you know allowing the moment to be too big. Yeah, they've they've certainly you know played before, um, but boy, you don't get any points for that. You know, you you have to do the right thing. But um, we we did have a level of poise. I thought um, you know that that hey there was going to be time. We we had talked before the game that. You know, Southeastern plays a lot of possessions and, and plays pretty quick. And so, you know, a nine-point deficit in a game against Southeastern is different than in a game against a team that, you know, uh, goes a little bit slower. So there were more possessions left, even though the margin was nine, and, and that probably helped us, you know, to have a good approach to know that there was time to, to get back. It's just one of 22 in conference that – you know, it's one against Southeastern to start conference play. Not the, Certainly not the easiest task to start conference play with the Savage Storm. How big is that to start conference play on the right foot going forward? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, they all count the same. And, you know, last year I believe we started 0-4. And so I know the guys are really excited that uh, we, we've yet to win a true road game. We lost at North Texas and then we lost um, – to Dallas Baptist last week on Wednesday and and so you know we're going into a place on Saturday where they've yet to lose a home game and uh, and so uh, you know I know the guys are looking forward to that we'll look forward to that as well Saturday in Ada Adam congrats on the win awesome thanks Luke SNU on the road in Ada on Saturday Crimson Storm and the Tigers tangle at one o'clock for the women three o'clock for the men, for all of us here at SNU Athletics, for Grant McNew, Julia Schwaki, and Cameron Andrus, I'm Luke McConnell saying good evening from the Sawyer Center.